Legends Footloose and I was in Georgia first couple weeks in and came down to Sassafras Mountain and basically fell halfway down the mountain and popped up thinking nobody saw it and of course 20 hikers saw it and then the name just kind of stuck because I'm Footloose. So it's just fancy and free. <laughs> so it wasn't an isolated incident? No. No. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> I started as a no-bow through hiker and then decided to flip and hurt my knee pretty soon after flipping. So I've got about 740-ish miles now. Um, probably just going to end up being a long section hiker last year and finish, hopefully finish most of it up next year. I'm sorry, wait, a lasher? A lasher, a long ass section hiker. So, um, tell us, uh, how did you get hurt? How did you injure yourself? Um, just basically overuse on my knee. Um, they thought it was a torn meniscus at first and it was just basically overused for 750 miles of hiking and Mount Katahdin just finally, my knee said no more for now. My toe, my big toe, gets very angry. I've been hiking on it for months and performing some field first aid and, you know, necessary surgeries with my pocket knife and made Big Pig very angry. And so I had to go to the podiatrist and get it numbed up and remove part of Mr. Big. Right on. Yeah. So, and... In retrospect, is it a good idea to dig around at your toe with a pocket knife? Well, I did clean it first. I just want to put that out there. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no. It seemed like a really good idea at the time because I, I was in pain. But no, don't, don't try it at home or on the trail. I understand that you um, were hiking with a group. You're trammeling. Uh-huh. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Um, yeah, so I basically forced myself to hike alone for the first six weeks and fell in with my first tramley, which is my trail family in the Smokies um, because she was really cold and I was out of cigarettes. So I gave her my lighter and she gave me a couple packs of cigarettes and we ended up hiking for 500 miles together. Um, her name's Little Knife, she's from Switzerland. And then my other trail sister that I summited Mount Katahdin with, uh, Karma, uh, lives pretty close to here. So, but now I'm so I'm solo again. Which do you prefer? I prefer them for different reasons at different times, but I really was aware of this little last little section that I did um, solo after having a tramway for 500 miles. That I think I really prefer hiking around people. Um, not necessarily people I hike with every day, but at least seeing people at night at the shelters and in towns and stuff. Um, I've had enough solitude and alone time out here that the people are really what makes the trail what it is for me personally. Mm -hmm. And have you uh, have you had any security concerns while you were hiking out there? Um. Not so much from animals. I mean, I, I've had some run-ins with bears. You know, you have to get loud with them and and run them off and keep a clean camp and, and hang your food. You know, you have to be aware and I guess somewhat confident of what you're doing. Um, people, I, you know, people, I think most all the people out there are great. Um, I haven't really had any issues. Of course, you're going to run into the random weirdo, whether you're on the trail or, or, or on the street. So, um... As far as safety concerns, um, I don't carry a weapon or anything on the trail. I don't feel the need to, I never really have. Um, I carry a little bit of mace with me and that's mainly just for hitchhiking for when I go into town, just not for the trail itself. So I feel really safe on the trail, actually. Right on. And do you push hard for miles? No. You're, you're more of a chill hiker? Yeah, I'm more of a slow and steady hiker. Um, not so much focused on the destination um, as I am just the the day-to-day -day journey getting there um, there's been times I've hiked less than a mile gotten up hike less than a mile and I find a perfect camp spot and know that I want to wake up there the next day and so I don't worry about making that 
you know, 12 to 15 miles or wherever it is. I stop and camp. I fish. You know, I'm enjoying the journey. Right on. What would you say your most useful bit of gear has turned out to be? Um, hmm. Of actual gear that I purchased, I'd probably say this right here. Um, it's been in my pack the whole time. As soon as you cool off, you get to camp, you throw it on. I where's, use it as a what, pillow what, at night. Where's it from? Um, it's a mountain hardware, Ghost Whisper, just a, a puffy. Um, a lot of hikers, we all carry puffies, but that's the one piece of gear. I wouldn't carry extra clothes really, but I would always carry this. You know, just for, you can get hypothermia in the summertime, really. Really? So, yeah, yeah, you can. You start sweating and you cool off real fast, you can. Um, and people are a lot less aware of the symptoms of it, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a possibility. Yeah. Are there uh, are there other dangers out there that the beginning hiker might not be aware of? Um, I think it's really, I see a lot of younger hikers especially, they get out there and they push, 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 push for miles. And it seems like usually about week five, well, they'll start off, they'll get really horrible blisters. Those will clear up. And then about week five, they'll start seeing stress fractures, muscle, muscle sprains and stuff like that. So... It really becomes a, a game of being aware that you're in a marathon type, you know, it's an endurance type situation and not a sprinting situation and treating your body accordingly every day, you know, knowing even though I may have the energy to do three more miles today, I can't, you know, I'm not going to push my body that hard. And, you know. So, so I'm a, I imagine you try to keep your weight down. Are you like a, an ultralight or? No, I'm not. A, I'm, I'm probably more of a lightweighter. I'm not really an ultra lightweighter because I, I carry a stove, you know, for me coffee and hot food is comfort items that are worth it to me um i carry a couple luxury items a deck of cards sometimes if i'm hiking with you know some tramway um fishing line you know so i don't i try to stay lightweight by buying the lightest weight gear but i still carry a couple luxuries you know a couple phone bank batteries are my, really my luxury item too so about how many pounds is your pack with food for five days and almost two and a half liters of water, I try to stay under 30 pounds. Um, and I, the heaviest I've ever had it was 46 pounds, um, but we were hiking at a spot where we knew we weren't gonna resupply a lot. And we were carrying a lot of heavy food. We wanted that food, so you know we were cooking like bread on the trail and took cooking oil so we could you know batter up fresh fish. and. Right on. Well, uh, what do you think of Angel's Rest? Um, you know, I fell in love with Angel's Rest. Um, I was pushing, pushed through Parisburg and really didn't get a, a chance to stop when I hiked through um, Angel's Rest. And somehow I became Facebook friends with Doc. And after I got hurt, I had put out there on Facebook, you know, that you know, post-trail depression is real, um, and just how much society sucks now that I'd been on the trail and I experienced this freedom, and just, you know, how it was becoming depressing. And and Doc just kind of reached out to me. She's like, well, you know, why don't you come to the rest for a little staycation and recover a little bit? And, and, uh, and so I did, and three weeks later, here I am still. So, yeah, I fell in love with the place. You seem to fit in really well. Yeah, I feel that problem with the people too. It's, it's not just the place, it's the people. Right, right. Okay, well, um, I understand that you've had a few bear encounters. Can you can you tell us about, uh, uh, what was the most interesting bear encounter you've had? The most interesting bear encounter, um, I was close to McAfee Knob. I was, I don't know, maybe 10 miles south of McAfee Knob in a campsite and there was a shelter like two tits of a mile from me and there was some college students that had camped there the night before and it had been raining so i just kind of decided i was going to hang out in my tent all day and i started hearing a sound i never heard before like some type of screaming and uh going on for quite a while and i step out of my tent and i see mama bear and then I yell at her, you know, go bear, you get loud, you get big. And um, then I see two cubs. And 
Yeah, so I'm chasing off cubs, and they kept circling around. Like, they'd leave, and they'd circle back around. And so I started reading in the log books, and there was actually had been that, that bear and her cubs, like, two nights before inside the shelter. So, um, yeah, those those two stayed or three stayed around around all day. So I was a little scared a tad. <laughs> right on. I understand there's some video of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see if I can't get my hands on that. Yeah, I was. I Go bear! Two cubs. I was at, using my acting skills and playing like I was really afraid. Oh, okay. I'm, I, I, I act sometimes when I'm not hiking. Right, I understand. So. In reality, you were totally cool with those bears hanging. Yeah, I had total control of the situation at all times. So. Right on. Yeah. I showed them who was boss in those woods. You sure did. Yeah. All right, and finally, um, if you could give some advice to the aspiring trail hiker, what advice would you give them? Um, be open-minded. You know, every, every hiker you run into out there is going to have a different way of doing things and the reason why they do things the way they do and, you know, the reason why they carry certain amount of gear. You're going to meet section hikers, day hikers, trail angels, um, so many different walks of life. And when you're in the woods and you're all dressed up and you're, you know, in your hiker gear, you know, we're all just hikers, so keep an open mind. Um, what are you going to run into out there? Um, enjoy the journey. Don't get so focused on the, on the destination that you miss out on the journey. Uh, because that, to me, that becomes the best part of it. Um, yeah, I didn't finish as a through hiker this year, but I realized it wasn't about that title of through hiker. Um, so definitely, um, and never quit on a bad day. Don't... <clears throat> Don't be out there in the woods dealing with rain day after day after day and decide that's the day you're going to quit. Get to a hotel, a hostel, get some hot food in you, get cleaned up, get a couple of days rest, and then reevaluate re the situation. Because it makes, you know, being hungry and, and having that hiker brain, uh, it, it changes a lot. You know, your journey and it can make it really uncomfortable or really uncomfortable. Enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Right on. Thank you very much, Footloose. Right on.